Oh, we're back at Chuffy. Man, Terry... Terry was a tough fight. I forgot that Terry's actually got a pretty good aim with his slushies. But, I mean, I think he's just shooting shoot-up berries at us, but... Slushy is funnier. Alright, well now we have a flight pad open up to us, which is great. It really helps navigate the level. And there's actually a place that we literally could not visit before, but now that we have the flight pad, we actually can. So we'll take these sprint shoes over here, jump up to the top, and here's the flight pad. Whoosh! So there are a couple of things we can get with this. Uh, for one, if you guys remember, we pushed a switch at the very beginning, which opened up a cage that has a Jinjo inside it. We can now finally actually grab that Jinjo. I was hoping we could preserve our flight a little longer, but no. I think you also can shoot a clockwork egg up there in order to pick up the Jinjo as well, but the game wants you to wait until you have the flight pad. I love how the dinosaurs kind of sound like cows. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have I mentioned how good the music in this game is? It's really good. Alright, let's actually go to the area that was just flat out inaccessible to us without the flight pad. Ouch! Gumbo! This area up here, there's a very tall wall here that we weren't able to get up before. But we can get up here with the flight pad. That's a big dino. Dippy, seeker of beverages. So thirsty, I need water badly. Why not go and look for some, then? It's not going to just drop out of the sky. The sun burns poor Dippy, so I must stay in my cave. Please get me a drink. This is another side quest that we can't actually get until very close to the end of the game. There's also a secret tunnel down here. Secret tunnel with a Cheeto page here, but unfortunately it is out of our reach. Actually, can we time a clockwork egg? Oh, we totally can. Ouch! Oh yeah, we can totally sequence break this with a clockwork egg. I just need better aim. Okay, that was real close. If I can just time it so that it drops on top of the Cheeto page, then we're going Oh, come on! That was so close. Gotta aim a little higher up, I guess. Like, here? There we go. <laughs> that is not what the game wants you to do, but that gives us another five Cheeto pages, which is just too perfect. After you get Dippy some water, uh, this area fills up with water and you're supposed to swim down there and get the Cheeto page that way. But that's just an example of how clockwork eggs can be used to sequence break kind of a lot of the game. I'm so thirsty. Please find me water before Dippy becomes extinct. I love how all the dinosaurs know that they're going to go extinct soon. It's so weird, but also, like, pretty funny. Alright. What we gotta do now is we gotta find a us a split-up pad, because... That's really the only way we're gonna be able to hatch Terry's eggs, because Kazooie can't hatch eggs with Banjo around. So, if that's the case, where are the nearest split-up pads? We can now warp to the top of the mountain. You'll notice there's still one warp pad that we have not accessed yet, and we'll access that later. No, no! I was trying to do that. 
the classic Banjo Kazooie, you do a ground pound and then you survive all fall damage. And I, I missed. Thankfully, I didn't die, but I came close. Okay, that guy's just enjoying life. We can't kill him. I would feel bad about it. That guy's trying to headbutt me, which I do not appreciate, but it doesn't, war it just doesn't justify ending his life. Alright, Kazooie's gonna do some solo work now. I know there's a split-up pad here somewhere, right? I thought there were split-up pads here at the... Oh no, there's not. There was a warp cloud here. If you're already split up, but there's not actually split up pads here. I gotta go to the Styra, the Styracosaurus family in order to find those split up pads. I guess that's one thing about Banjo Tooie that's a little frustrating. Sometimes split up pads can be uh, a little on the scarce side. Oh wait, there's split up, split up pads right there. Oh, and we're right next to the flight pad too. This is fantastic. Kazooie is on death's door. That is less fantastic. Oh, okay, seriously? I can't... I can't jump over here? Oh, no, I can't. I just gotta do a precise hover. Also, I'm not sure if I pointed this out before, because it's been a month since I played this, but uh, Solo Kazooie jumps much, much higher with the uh, springy step shoes. All right. So the first egg we saw was over the oasis on top of the ledge. We're gonna head over there with just Solo Kazooie. And this is where the ability to hatch is going to come in handy. Aw, that's one of my precious babies! Aw, isn't it cute? That is an adorable little pterodactyl. Wow, it can just fly right out of hatching, right after hatching. It knows exactly where to go. How convenient. Also, who did steal Terry's eggs then? That's, was it Grunty? <laughs> was it Inigo? Who? I kind of need some health, buddy. Alright. Another one of the eggs is in the Oogle Boogles cave. Just get... Come on, just get out of the quicksand. There we go. There's also an egg in the Ungabungus cave. There's a signpost telling us about that. It's also pretty well hidden in Ungabunga's cave as well. We've seen it before, but... It's in a weird place. Oh my gosh. When they say jump for joy, that is what they're talking about. You just gotta be careful not to die in here. Alright. Hop up here. There's this red part on the wall with a tiny little crack. At the end of this crack is another one of the eggs. That's one of my precious babies! Aw, isn't it cute? I'm not sure if this is the right voice for... I, again, I go, I base people's voices based on their, like, guh, 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 like, sound, which for Terry is like that, wah, wah, wah. So that's how I'm basing his voice, even though he probably has a deeper voice, like, oh, now what do I do? But I feel like that doesn't fit Terry very well. All right. There are two more eggs left. One of them is in the Oogle Boogle cave, so... Oogle Boogle is closer to this side. Nope! You know what, that's actually okay. That warps me back to the, war the split-up pad, which is actually right next to the Oogle Boogle cave. 
I probably should have gone to Oogle Boogle first. Alright, back to Flight Pad. Skadoosh! Because remember, the caveman was guarding the Oogle Boogle's cave. He wasn't guarding us from getting in, he was guarding them from getting out. Because he was a jerk that way. Doom, 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 doom. Google Boogles Cave. So the egg is up here. And thankfully, there's a shock jump disc right here, letting us jump up super high as Solo Kazooie, and we can hatch this egg, too. That's one of my precious babies! Aw, isn't it cute? They are adorable. I'm still amazed that they can fly right after being hatched. Alright. So that's three out of the four eggs. Now we're going to go to the one that's right next to Terry's nest and hatch that one. And that's where things are going to get a little dicey. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure to reunite with Banjo so we can bring him there too. It'll save us some time. Actually, I was going to go to a warp pad and warp to the top of the mountain, but I think it'll be more fun to just take the flight pad there. This is another reason why they didn't actually give you the flight pad until after you beat Terry, because that would have just let you rocket to the top of the mountain way too fast. There's also still that cave over there that we've yet to explore. Oh, hey! <laughs> I didn't even know that there was a honeycomb guy up there. That's, that's cool. Learn something new every day. Oh, I heard the little cheeping of the baby pterodactyls. That's cute. Alright. So at this part, we're going to use the split-up pads again. And again, try to save this egg for last. Now, Kazooie can't actually get up there. But if you'll remember, there is a flight pad at the very bottom of here. We're going to use that. To go and here we go. Hatch the last egg. Look how big it is. Yikes! She's a big girl, isn't she? Too right, she can't even fly. Hmm, I'm not sure if there will be room in our nest. You couldn't just hit it with one of those grenade eggs, could you? You heartless! Only joking! Bring her back to me and uh, I'll work out an exercise program for her. I'll just go and find Banjo, then. <laughs> yeah, the last egg that you hatch will be a larger-than-usual pterodactyl who you will have to escort back to the nest using Banjo's taxi pack ability. So, this one is by far the most convenient to do that because it's a very, very short walk back to the nest. However, if it's in, say... Oh, I don't know. The Oogle Boogles Cave, or... <laughs> on top of that oasis platform, there, that's gonna be kind of a trek to get it back to Terry, so. I'm actually not even sure how you would get Banjo up to that egg platform at the beginning there. Here you go. That's the last one! Thank goodness! Kazooie won't want to see another egg for the rest of the game! Here's the other half of your reward as promised! I like how 
You actually end up befriending Terry after, like, beating him up. Most, and I guess kind of the same with Old King Cole to his sorts, or at least you earn Old King Cole's respect and like, okay, I guess you can use my train. Most of the other bosses you just flat out kill, but Terry's actually, like, becomes one of your allies, which is, I, I like that. I, I actually like the Terry side quest. I just, again, that last egg can be really annoying to deal with if you don't actually know ahead of time that you're going to have to take it with Banjo in your path. And yeah, it's, it's what, as far as I can tell, it's whichever one you, you hatch last is the one you'll have to escort back. Because at the very least, I've, I've had the Ungabungus Cave one be last, and that was kind of a pain to escort back. Anyhow, that's pretty much everything we can do in Pterodactyl Land for now, except for this area over here that we have not actually gone down yet. Because we got very rudely killed by a Pterodactyl along the way. Wonder where this goes. This leads to the bonfire cavern. I don't know who's keeping these bonfires going, but we're gonna need some ice eggs. Also, I recommend shooting these guys on the way, lest they knock you out of the sky when you try to jump from platform to platform. Single ice egg will put out the fire temporarily, but it will reignite. As you can see. And this is an eerie green glow. I wonder where this leads. This leads to the Stomping Plains. And it is dead silent except for the wind. That's a little ominous. Who could have made those giant footprints? Stompadon, Triassic Steamroller. That is what made the footprints. So, if you try walking in the stomping plains, Stompadon will take that personally and will stomp you to death. Stompadon is the largest creature in the Banjo Kazooie universe, and um, yeah, it's quite frightening. <laughs> we never actually see more than just its foot, but it it has quite a bit of malevolence in it, and it will just go out of your way to just stomp. It'll go out of its way to stomp you over and over again. If it stomps you once, it reduces your HP to 1, and then if it stomps you again, then, uh, you die. <laughs> Anyhow, thank goodness we unlocked the final, uh, warp point. I, I am heading in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's kind of weird that, like, one of the warp points is at the very top of the tower, and at the very top of the mountain, and then another warp point is also basically at the very top of the mountain. We're gonna use this warp point here to go to the Stomping Plains. And that's just the face of the generic dinosaur that teaches baby T-Rex how to roar. So, in order to get across the Stomping Plains unscathed, we're gonna need to some help from Wonderwing and Boulder. Look at how big it is. I don't know why it hates us so much, but this is its domain. And it will destroy us. And there we go. We can push the Banjo and Kazooie switch. Get ourselves a Jiggy. But then you'll notice there's also a Banjo exclusive switch. And a Kazooie exclusive switch. Now that's interesting. There's also this way up here. Going through here brings us back to the beginning of the Stomping Plains. Also, there are split-up pads right here. So, there are actually three ways to get through this area. One is Banjo and Kazooie, one is just Banjo, and one is just Kazooie. 
We do not have the means to get through this as just Banjo yet, but we can actually get through this with just Kazooie. And, but it involves us being quick and utilizing these footprints in the ground. So we're going to hang out in this footprint, wait until right after it's, it lifts up its foot, jump, and then head into the next footprint. Some of these get very tight. But at the end, if you do it right, you can push the switch and get ourselves a Jinjo. And that's our first orange Jinjo. There are only two in the game. Yeah, we'll have to come back until uh, after we learn another move for just Banjo before we can get for this a third time and get whatever is behind that gate. And unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing we have left to do in uh, Pterodactyl Land. So, there are two Jiggies left. One of them is by giving water to Dippy. Then the other one is by uh, feeding the Oogle Boogles. Neither of which we can actually do right now. And we've gotten everything else in Pterodactyl Land. So, yeah. We have officially beaten World 5. Next time on Banjo-Tooie, we will be uh, getting that new cheat from Cheeto. There's something we can do in the Isle of Hags now that we have one of the new moves from Pterodactyl Land. And we will be going to World 6, a world that is very widely despised by most people who play the game and who it's basically universally considered the toughest world in the whole game. I actually really like the next world. I really love it, believe it or not, and I'll get into why next time. Hope you tune in for then. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.